It's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit here on Mav TV. Our favorite time of the week, talking sprint car racing, and we are glad you have joined us. Ashley Strummy and Steve Post. Now we're at Volusia, but we have a special edition of Wing Nation here because last year during the World Finals, we caught up with some of the legends of sprint car racing: Dave Blaney, Terry McCarl, and Bobby Allen. But it wasn't we, uh -uh. <laughs> it was NASCAR Hall of Famers, Ray Evernham and Tony Stewart doing it at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. What a what a clash of Hall of Famers that turned out to be. It was so incredible and the stories were phenomenal and it was just great because it was buddies, yeah. talking with buddies, you exactly. know? Exactly, so we had a great crowd joining us there at the NASCAR Hall of Fame and story time at the NASCAR Hall of Fame was yes. really, really good. So on this week's edition of Wing Nation, we're gonna share with you those stories from those drivers and I'll tell you what, Terry McCarl, not a better character in the sport, is there? <laughs> He's definitely a character. <laughs> Dave Blaney, kind of quiet, you would think. Still has great stories, though. Yes, absolutely. And then Bobby Allen. Just a legend in his own right. <laughs> I know. And talk about he is a great story, that's for sure. So we're going to step away. When we come back, Bobby Allen will be our first guest on this special edition of Wing Nation. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Special edition of Wing Nation, setting the stage again. This is the NASCAR Hall of Fame. NASCAR Hall of Famers, Ray Evernham and Tony Stewart talking to Sprint Car Hall of Famers. And up first, Bobby Allen. I gotta tell you a story about, you know, Bobby, my story about Bobby Allen. You know, we, um, growing up in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, he, he's a man like every, you know, every auto race in New pick it up there every week. And I had really never uh, met him. So Nashville, we're at Nashville for the World Outlaws race. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to go over there and introduce myself. So he was sitting, you know, with, with the boys, with the cars there. And I walked over and I said, hi, I'm uh, Ray Evernham. And he just looked at me. He said, I know who you are. And he didn't say anything else. <laughs> and I was so intimidated. I was like, well, it was nice to meet you. And I went back and I, I said, there, and I said, man, that, that, was, that was really awkward. I didn't know what else to say, but, you know, it was honestly intimidating for me to go over and meet this guy who I had seen growing up just whoop everybody so bad out across Pennsylvania so I just figured I'd share that 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 was that was kind of an awkward moment for I can tell uh, for, you why for me. because I was, several times I'd see you somewhere and you probably didn't know it was me racing or whatever and I walk up to go to talk to you and you kind of like just walk away <laughs> and so I thought so hey. when you came up, you know, I said, yeah, I know you, Ray. Yeah, yeah I knew uh, you before. Uh, how awkward. <laughs> that was kind of a payback. How awkward is it feeling now, bud? Yeah, it's awkward now. It's awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at, at the racetrack, you know what it's like. Yeah, you know? that's, that's what it is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I've always heard about you is that you are so, I mean, great driver, but great technical guy. And as I watch... You know, when I watch cars on the track as a crew chief, I know what I'm looking for. What, what do you see? What are you looking for to get those cars dialed in when you see them go around? Just to see how which way they lean, how straight they go, and how they come off the corner, if they're loose looking or tight looking. Just, just normal stuff everybody looks at. Just see how, and look at the times. If they're fast, well, I guess that looks good. I don't know. And what about working with the, with the boys? Do you have to communicate with them different? Because when, when I worked with the IROC guys, the, one of the things that, that each driver would be kind of saying the same thing, but they'd be saying it a different way, and I had to translate it. I seem, well, ever since we started, I knew this different. Usually drivers have a, a crew chief to work on it and, and whatever. And I've taught the boys how to work on it, how to set up their cars, and they'd ask me questions. I said, well, let's just try it. You remember that field so you know which way to go. 
So I've done that along, and they've done a, I've done a pretty good job. Now they basically do everything yourself, and anything I say don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually a little bit of a, it's like, oh, I saw a gun there. And I, I was actually talking to Blaney about that. Does your kid do that? He said, no, my kid's good. He listens. So I thought, wait, I can't wait to get back to tell him that, because they don't care what I say. Logan, when he ran go-karts, he'd run high, and he was fast. He'd win all the races, and I'd say, Logan, you need to come down the middle. The middle of the racetrack's faster. He said, but it feels faster up top. It took me three weeks to get him to come down the middle than win them races on the middle. It just, they just it seemed like they were, they were like a fight. And Jacob, he'd complain. He said, he don't care if he wins the race. He says, I'm always going to say something that he did wrong. I said, no, you can run fifth if you did everything right. I'll tell you, you did everything right. But, you know, that's right. So they, they, uh, they really re reject me saying anything to him right now. So I just got to kind of watch him and suggest something and hope them that two weeks later they do that. He's <laughs> planting the seed. Planting the seed. Uh, I've always wondered, and I've, I've never even asked you this, where did the shark come into it? Where did, where did having the shark on the front of the hood come from? And, and the, I have, I've got a huge helmet collection. I've got one of your helmets, and it's got the shark teeth around the, the eye port. Just always wondered where shark came into to Bobby Allen's. Okay, how that came about, let's see. Well, first I'll tell one story. Here I was in the beginning with the Outlaws, and actually my dad was in the beginning with, with NASCAR. He drove for Bill France and run up down the beach, and when they first were trying to get the money for Daytona, he'd fly to, I actually flew down to, I think, Cuban Airways to try to find money to build a thing. So he, I grew up around all the NASCAR beginning guys that my dad knew, Marshall Teague, they wouldn't even know who that, he was, and all, and all that. Well, anyway, my dad never flew in World War II, but he trained pilots, and he, that's what he did. I have a big picture on my wall with him in the plane with the shark teeth, and he, uh, he died at 59 of cancer, and the one boy, Jack Ecker, worked for me. He said, Bobby, you need to put that shark on the side of your car for your dad. So I'm trying to get through it without crying. But anyway, that's how that came about. And then it was great, because then all the kids loved it. So you sucked the kids in and the parents, so it was great. So I'm glad we did it. And now that's what it turned into, the, the shark team. Yeah. And you, you talked about that NASCAR uh, connection, but not a lot of people know it. You've got, had a pretty good connection with the Allison brothers. When yeah, you started, I, right? I grew up with them. Yeah, I fixed them up with a couple of girls, Donnie. <laughs> um, but, uh, the ones yeah. they're married to? Can we talk about that or not? Mm, no. I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, yeah, I ran around with Don, I'm from Miami originally, and they would always, they were from Alabama, they'd come down there. In fact, that's where I wanted to go to Alabama first to follow them. And I remember, well, I'm jumping stories like I always do. I remember wanting to go to NASCAR once I was winning sprint races, and I said, what's it cost to run? He said, Bobby, it costs 10000 a race. Wouldn't that be nice now? Yeah, 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 yeah it would be nice yeah. now. But anyway, no, um, let's see, the, I, I did it all the time. The, the question was, no, with the Allisons. Yeah, I grew up there. In fact, um, Eddie Allison, which was their older brother, he went. He started helping me on my race car uh, one night, and I crashed it. And I didn't know how to fix it, and he was only lived two doors down from me, so he started fixing. It, and then me and Donnie ran around together all the time. And Bobby was cause with the same name. You know, I just I ran around with him, grew up around around him all the time. Now, did you always run dirt, or did you run the modified pavement? No, I ran. Guys? Actually, that's why in the beginning when I ran. I was really good on slick tracks because I came from pavement. I was the world's go-kart champion, which is pavement, and I ran the tracks in Florida, Hollywood, um, Palmetto Speedway, West Palm Beach, and you drove off the right front. And so when I started running the races, that's how I drove. I'd always drive off the right front and, and uh, let the back end follow and stick with it. So that, that's where I grew up, on asphalt, and then went to dirt. Because at that time, to go to Indianapolis, it was all dirt drivers. I wanted to go to Indianapolis. It was like a dream. And then I uh, went there and you had to be 21. And, uh, and yet then they only ran one time. Oh, that was his deal. You had, to be, you had to be 21. And I started when you know, I was 18 or something. And you had to run USAC. You couldn't run nothing else. They had, they didn't, if you ran USAC, you couldn't run all the other races that I was actually making a living off of. So I ran a little bit and it rained out all the time and I said, well, I got to go back to my races. And I didn't like nobody telling me what to do either. So that's why I like the outlaws. Yeah, I never liked the way NASCAR told me what to do either. So. I know. That's why you came back to Spring Now look, they're going to put me in here where I got to listen to what they do still. So, Bobby Allen, what a character. Always great to hear his stories. Let's step away. When we come back, T-Mac is in the house. We'll hear from Terry McCarl.
special edition of Wing Nation here on MAV TV, presented by Sage Fruit. We're talking to some Hall of Famers from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Ray Evernham, Tony Stewart, and here they are with Terry McCarl. Aaron's came down and yelled at me before, though. Yeah. So whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. You joined the crowd. Whoa. Again, my side of the story. Yeah, my we, we can story. go there. I, I remember being <laughs> upside down at East Bay Raceway, laying on my side in a heat race. We're fighting for like third or fourth I in a heat race. This one. I do. Oh, see. Because <laughs> we, again, Memories. we were right in front of this whole crowd, and I'm laying on my side, and you're calling me every name in the book, and I was like, so pissed but you like, did come over you and okay? apologize later <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, it was a few different words than that there was, see i was worried was about tony i was trying to help him out of the car i thought yes. he was injured yeah. yes yeah and, then and there was another the time way. at houston's you were I, you the probably houston's remember that right, yeah remember. yeah <laughs> did you not know that she was a redhead because oh yeah i, I learned right. do not do All not right. yell at her you're not gonna win <laughs> i don't know what I you're like talking redheads, about so i knew it i got to um to do some racing with her and um with brooke tatnell and we ran one of your events uh and I was really honestly impressed of the way that that whole event was run, it was promoted. And what I wanted to ask you is, do you think because you see everything from the driver's side that that makes you a, a better promoter, you know what the fans want, you know what the drivers need, and it just, that, sm that show always runs really smooth out there. I think, yeah, that's, I've just, I grew up, my dad was a race car driver and he was like, a lot like you, he built his own cars, he built his own engines, he was an amazing welder, all that stuff, but I grew up around it and, and so when I was a little boy, you know, we didn't have the internet, unfortunately, I'm dating myself a little bit, but speed sport was, man, I, it was there on Thursdays and when my mailman was late, if it came Fridays, I was mad. And I read that thing cover to cover about the sprint cars and I'd go back and you know, read all about AJ Foyd, he was my hero, and I'd read, I'd read all, by the end of, but the next time it came, I knew everything. Back then, they used to put out racing, they'd have the, the, pur the purses and stuff and all the, and then the ads. And I remember as a little boy, we were redoing purses, trying to make it pay better for the guys. And so I've seen about every angle of it. I mean, I've been the son of a guy who raced and then he was a car owner and a mechanic. And, and then, uh, you know, I've just grown up around it and I've seen all the aspects, I think. And I just, I'm passionate about sprint cars and I'm always trying to better the sport. And between my wife and I, we think of, try to think of new ways to do things. I mean, we've been copied by so much stuff. It kind of irritates me at first when people copy our ideas, but then I think it's, you know, it's for the better of the sport. People are out there trying to promote. You know, it got, a, got to a point where I felt like people were just putting on races. They weren't promoting, you know. Uh, our philosophy was, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you come to a race, whether it's NASCAR or World of Outlaws, and the racing isn't that good. I wanted the people to leave our events and go, you know, racing wasn't that great, but we had a really good time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we worked real hard. I think last year, between Sage Fruit and all the people that to support us, we threw out like 2,000 hats and shirts. And, you know, we go to these monster truck things and they'll shoot out about five. During the night, everybody gets all excited. I mean, last year, I think we counted, we were up around 2,000 goodies for the fans between the two days. You know, and if you leave there with a free hat or a shirt or, you know, Budweiser gives me a lot of stuff, I'm getting out Dale Jr. signs and things like that. The fans love it and you know, it kind of paid for your ticket. So, you know, I try to give out great things for the owners and drivers. And uh, this is our 25th anniversary this year. And so we're going to pump it up again. I gave out chassis kits one year to, to heat race winners. You know, it was worth 5,000 bucks to win a heat race. So, uh, Raymer, Raymer was there one time and I was giving out rear ends and he crashed on the start of the heat race. And he come to me later, he's like, in that rear end. He goes, I just wanted to win that rear end so bad. I ended up junking my car. I go, my fan's seen a good show. <laughs> so I, just, I enjoy promoting. That's a passion for me. It gets me excited. And uh, I learned when I went to one of his events for the first time at Oskaloosa, something he did that nobody at the time had ever done was all the vendors that wanted to come sell parts at the racetrack and they wanted to make money he wouldn't let them in unless they donated something to give to the heat race winners for example and that's something nobody does i mean it's and and it's because he cares about the racers and, and you know hearing what you're doing on the grandstand side i mean i didn't even know that side of it but i knew that was something that always stuck in my mind the first time i went there to your event and was like man the heat races i mean it's more than just your starting <laughs> spot i mean you're gonna get something out of it. You're gonna get a rear end, you're gonna get a fuel cell, you're gonna get something out of it that's gonna help your race team. And this is a guy that goes toe to toe with these vendors that, that wanna come and, and you know sell parts at the racetrack. And he's like, well, you can do that, but you gotta give me something to give back to these racers. And that's, that's something nobody else does that I don't think you get enough credit for. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we've been copied a lot and I enjoy it, but uh, again, it's my passion. When I quit racing, that's kind of what I wanna do. But unfortunately, if you guys know, Tony broke his leg and it ended up being at our race. And I was like, because I wanted to win that rear end. No, you did. You were going to win the race. I was all like, he just took the I lead. I almost lost my rear end out of the Yeah, you so. did. 
I was standing in turn one, he just took the lead. I swear, in my mind, I was like, yes, he's gonna win my race. His name's gonna be on our shirts. This is gonna be great. About a lap and a half later, yet red flag comes out. And I'm like, I just had a feeling that he was clear over in turn three, so I didn't see it. I'm like, oh no, this can't be. And so we got a call, Lori got a call that week from ESPN and they're like, yeah, we wanna get credentials for your race and stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, are, you guys, are you guys wanting to come because Tony Stewart's racing? They go, oh no, we're coming to interview Kyle Larson and check Kyle Larson out. <laughs> so like it was on ESPN in minutes after he, you got your wreck. I'm like, oh, I was just devastated that he got hurt, but uh, he's obviously came back. We, we, sh we show each other our leg scars once in a while. His is, I think his is worse than mine. We're gonna be leg models one day. T-Mac, one of the great personalities and one of the great ambassadors of sprint car racing. When we return, Dave Blaney is in the hot seat. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Buckeye Bullet, Dave Blaney is up next on our special edition of Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit at the NASCAR Hall of Fame with our host, Tony Stewart and Ray Everham. I, I actually got to watch your dad race. Never got to race, I don't think I ever got to race with your dad, but I got to, got to watch him race with guys with the big blocks around Syracuse and stuff. Yeah. And he didn't race with those guys a lot, but he always had, he was always tremendously respected. And what, what did that teach you about, about racing? The kind of respect that he carried from some of the, what I thought were the greatest racers uh, on the planet. He did, he was a respected guy from, um, it, it was a little odd where he raced in Western PA, Ohio. He won probably more than anybody else in the divisions he was in, whether it was sprint cars, modifieds, but he was a guy that never got booed by the fans. Uh, the guys he raced with liked him, fans liked him, and it was easy to tell why. He raced everybody clean, fair, but raced harder than anybody too at the same time. So odd combination sometimes to have a guy like that and um and he wasn't you knew him a little bit and he wouldn't say two words he never talked and uh so I'm, you got that from from him we're, we're oh, getting he you was, out of your show right oh i'm a movie star compared <laughs> to him he would <laughs> he would say nothing but people are always shocked and they ask dale and i what else, what did your dad actually teach my dad said nothing about racing to us nothing didn't say anything you know no advice with the cars driving, nothing. It was strange, and um, but he was he was the best guy ever. Good-hearted guy, um, really good. I wish I could have carried his um, the way he acted with Dale and I to Ryan because I couldn't shut up when he was a kid, <laughs> yakking at him. You know, you're doing this well, wrong, you're doing that wrong. Bad. But yeah, he's he's an awesome kid, yeah. and um, he's a kid that well maybe Bobby said something about it, but he never pushes back. It, if you give him advice, if you tell him. The brutal, honest, you're screwed, okay. Just never pushes back. Wants to know, that's good. It, it is kind of funny, because I, I'd get a, I got a chance to be around your dad a little bit, but like you said, he never said anything. You say very little, <laughs> your, other bro, your brother won't shut up. Yeah. So it's like somewhere in that deal, it lost, it, yeah, it well, started losing its. Uh, I'm one of those guys where you, you have to be good at something. You know, Dale's got the <laughs> area. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> This isn't funny. this isn't on film or anything, right? So no, and nobody. Yeah, no, trust me, we're not gonna we're not gonna tell him at all what you yeah. just said about this. He knows it. Oh, trust me, he knows. He knows because I get to, I got to deal with him when I bought the All Stars. So um, it's um, some of my best moments are just going to the drivers' meetings because you, you could show up and be having a bad day and you left the drivers' meeting and you couldn't stop laughing and almost to the point where you're crying, you're laughing so hard, but. That's, that's part of you that I don't think a lot of people see as much either, is that you're kind of quiet like your dad, but you have a lot of your brother yeah. as well to where when you when you get kind of behind closed doors, I've been with you and yeah. we've been behind everything <laughs> and, and be doing the same thing laughing. It's like the guy's got the most dry sense of humor you've ever seen, but he may not say anything that's funny for an hour, but then he's gonna say one thing that you're gonna, that you can't get out of your head for the next 30 minutes because it's so funny. But you guys are a real fun family to be around. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to spend a lot of time with your father, but 
uh, you, you could tell that uh, you know he, he brought you guys up the right way in the race yeah. for sure. Yeah, and, it, and for with him, he wasn't going to show you how to put this together, do this. So you had to watch, and you, and you, you want to learn, you had to watch. And um, you, same with his racing, you just watch every lap, and there, that, and that's what you're going to figure out from him. And and it's fun to watch Dave now because you know we're kind of in an era where guys really aren't creative like they used to be and, and thinking outside the box. I mean, everybody well, goes... we all got fined so much. Well, that too. But, <laughs> but everybody kind of buys their cars. You buy all the components and everybody builds their cars and they go race. You go look at any of Dave Blaney's race cars, you aren't going to find that. You can't go buy that car somewhere. He's, he's always thinking outside the box. Uh, some of the stuff you do, it, it's you, you got to sit there. And I've been in the pits and I've looked at it and I've kind of had to... We, we would be sitting there having a conversation and I always had my head down was, I was trying to figure out what you had designed and created. And then I'd leave and then I'd kind of look back and I'd still be looking at it and I wasn't anywhere near you, but still trying to figure out and can't figure out what <laughs> angle you're working with it. But some of the stuff you've got on these cars nowadays, these aren't, these aren't anywhere near what a typical sprint yeah. car yeah. has been or probably ever will be. I mean, some of the stuff you're doing is way ahead of its time with them. I don't know about that. You, you don't find a lot of the parts, but you don't find my cars at Victory Lane that much either. So, <laughs> so there's a little ma balance there. There's, I, I see. I see. There's nights though when you hit on it and, and yeah. you get it figured out, and it's like you watch it, and it's like, man, that thing looks like that'd be fun to drive right now. Yeah. Well, so there's, there's something to it. Yeah. For me, it's I'm 57 years old now, and I can't beat the top young guys in a sprint car. I can't do it. So. Well, neither can I. So yeah, I know. I know. I mean, we, we all see it. Yeah. <laughs> see? There was that one line. See? There it is. There you go. You 30 got it. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be He called me out on that. <laughs> How about Dave Blaney joining Ray and Tony on the stage at the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Hey, Ashley. What are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. I am telling you the stories I could listen to those three guys talk all day long. It's a shame that it has to be in such a short segment because I'm sure they've got stories for days. Well, the good news with it is, is that you can go to wingnation.com or our Wing Nation YouTube page and the full length versions of those stories are there. I think the other part about it was, I'm not sure who had more fun. Us, <laughs> the guys that were on stage or the hosts on stage, Tony and Ray, both, after they got done, were talking about, man, thanks for the opportunity to talk to those guys. There's so much respect among the different disciplines of racing. Absolutely. Like I said, they're buddies. You know, they're friends, and they all have the same passion. And when that kind of collides, it makes for pretty incredible stuff. It really does. Great, great story time, and we're glad we got a chance to share those to you. Again, those stories are available on wingnation.com, and you can go to the Winged Nation page on our YouTube channel for those and a whole lot more. So, so much good stuff on our YouTube page. Of course, we're very active on Twitter and on Facebook and all the social media. And next week, we'll be back in studio with a normal show, if there is such a thing. I don't like that. Oh, well, I like <laughs> can't, it. Can't we just stay here in Florida? Exactly. <laughs> we should do that. Make sure, though, by the way, you get your tweets in, because right. next week, we will have our Tweet Your Seat Tweets of the Week and a whole lot more. She's Ashley Strummy. I'm Steve Post. Glad you joined us for this very special edition of Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit here on MAV-TV. Yeah.